And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. Marilyn Manson, System of a Down, Guns and Roses, we will rock out with our guests this week. Nashville, Tennessee is a place to be. Gear Expo smoking. Dave and Herb coming to Middle Tennessee State University. Yeah, yeah. And the Blackbird Session on and popping. Yes. Brand new ITL. JD, let's do it. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. We doing all my when I'm butting. Every week. <laughs> hey, hey, thanks for dropping by and hanging out with us. Uh, got a great show for you today and a bunch of little surprises and uh, cool things for you to hang around and check out. And Absolutely. information. Let's do it. Want to? Let's do it. Cool. Hey, audio family, great to see you. We trust your week was good. Big shout out to our partners. You know them. The Blackbird Academy, yep. Vintage King, Ooh. Lander, yes. DTS, yep. Avid, yep. Recording Connection, and Fab Factory. As we discussed, as Dave alluded to, if you love audio of any kind and you are in or near or can get to Nashville, Tennessee between October 20th and 24th, you just may want to. You want to know why? Here's what's up. On the 20th of October, Dave and I are going to stop in at Middle Tennessee State University to speak to the fine folks there. It's a great audio school. We're going to give some stuff away as well. It's open to the public. Uh, we'll be in the Tennessee room of the James Union building. That's their student union building at 6.30 p.m. This is brought to you by friends at MTSU and Lander. Tascam is also going to provide some giveaway stuff, so we want to see you there. That's October 20th, 6.30, Dave and Herbert, MTSU in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, in the Tennessee room of the James Union building. Plus, if you come, you'll be automatically eligible for an invitation-only VIP party two days later in Nashville at Gear Expo. That's going to be with Dave and I and all the panelists. So you may want to get to MTSU October 20th. That's going to be cool. James, uh, James Union building, the Tennessee room, October 20th at 6.30. Two days later... Then it is Gear Expo Nashville. It is the absolute baddest audio block party <laughs> in the business. It's at the beautiful Vintage King facility. Um, it's just a party under the sun. Now see if this sounds appealing to you. So you get the best gear and audio, a chance to win a ton of it for free, you meet a bunch of audio legends, you get some job and scholarship opportunities, there's food, there's beer, there's guys, there's gals, and that special invitation-only VIP party that I talked about, you also will be eligible to attend that as well, too, to hang out with all those people, Dave and I. It's free. How do you beat that? Here's what I'd suggest. Sign up quickly at this URL right here, thegearexpo.com. Do it. It is filling up fast. It's going to be a ball. You want to know who's going to be there? How about this? Meet legendary rocker Chris Lord Algae. He'll be there. DJ Swivel from Chainsmokers and Beyonce fame, he'll be there. Brendan Benson from the Tours, yeah. Josh Goodwin, who engineered oh, the Justin Josh. Bieber turnaround. Scoop Blandin, who does the front of house for Lady Annabellum, he'll be there. Amazing songwriters like Mark Beeson, Phil O'Donnell, Jason Duke, Liz Hingber. They've got hits from Blake Shelton to Kelly Pickler, Reba McIntyre to Craig Morton, Kelsia Ballerini to Keith Urban, and lots, lots more. A really cool performance with our boy, the comeback story of the year. We call it the We Stand for David Jam. David. David Platalero, which you see behind me, five months from almost severing his spine, he sent a video where he took off his hand controls from his car and he is driving with both feet. Amazing. He's going to perform. Uh, he's going to perform with um, John Willis, who does oh, guitar John. with Kenny Chesney. Also Great with term. Mike Brig, ah, let me get this right, Brignardello, who also works with Tim McGraw. So, David, listen, guys love him, girls want to be with him. You just got to meet him. He will inspire. What was that? <laughs> girls want to be with him. Girls want to be with him, and guys love him. There's an opportunity. There's an opportunity. 
<laughs> there's an opportunity for to me to learn how to speak, speak well, <laughs> but also uh -huh. to tease him a little bit about something. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> He's got a little crush he thing happening. He's getting well a little too fast. A little fast. He might need to slow his roll down a little bit. Let's call, let's call her inspiration. Okay, okay let's cool. Do it. Hey, Dave, we love you, man. So, so really cool panels. You've got uh, songwriters in the morning, the performance in the afternoon. The producer engineer panel with Chris and Josh and Brendan and, mm -hmm. and DJ Swivel. Then our then we have what our cool gig we call it our cool gigs and audio panel. That'll include folks who work in audio in different kinds of ways. We'll have folks from the movie business, uh, actually the Pitch Perfect, which was an, a movie about singing. Um, audio websites that can get you gigs. Audio forensics, how that's used in crime oh, and so stuff. Cool. In sports, in radio sound design and much much more there's a lot of opportunity for you in audio and we're going to present it to you now what about that free gear you want to listen to what you can win let's hear that from the happy hungarian who's hankering for hattie's hot chicken Whoa. he goes by the name he goes by the name of <laughs> that was a good one that was good i like that, that thank really you good. So, my man. Oh, he's been practicing for a yes. yes, he's got a little show business. It's, yeah. it's, it's all that hot chicken. So, uh, <laughs> remember last time you had hot chicken, we had to take you to the hospital because you had, uh, it was called Mother Cluckin' Hot. Yeah. And it was too hot for you. I'm going to repeat that one. That one sucked. How about <laughs> gear? We got a bunch of gear? We have so much gear to give away. Like, Stuff from Ableton, Avid, Avid Pro Tools Doc, microphone from Apogee, gear from Tascam, Skio, Isotope, products from Audionamics. Mm -hmm. X scholarship for recording connection. Lots so of much stuff. To, lots of stuff to give lots away. Lots of stuff. Am I eligible this year? No. Never. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually gonna put something to the side. You tell me for I don't you. have an opportunity. I'm gonna get you a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> and a sticker. Uh, bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> so tons of gear and Chongor maybe read off a third of it. Um, Hurry to thegearexpo.com and sign up right away. You know how we do it. You gather around, we throw this stuff out, and you go make hits. Um, you're going to meet people, hang with people, get free gear, see the best gear, have some beer, take some pictures, really revel in the part that you're in a community of audio badasses, and it's a chance for you to come hang with them. Um, and we look forward to seeing it. It's always a fun thing for us, isn't it? Beyond fun. I yeah. look, forward to, look forward to it every year. I feel like I'm going home it's when I go great. to Nashville. Yeah, it's absolutely. Great. So much fun. And then to complete the Tennessee Troika, uh, it's the Blackbird Sessions coming up. That's you, man. What do you, what, what do you have in store? Well, we've got uh, three or four seats left, and I've been kind of hanging on to them because we always have everything we do. we got last-minute people. Mm -hmm. uh, check with Karma on that, as Herb has said. Uh, Herb's going to drop by and speak. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris is going to drop by. A lot of my friends are going to drop by. CLA's coming through. It's really I, cool. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the main thing is it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to not just uh, learn stuff, but you can learn a little bit OJT style. You can learn a little bit, uh, listen to me, philosophize about things, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Is that a word, philosophize? Yeah, it is. It is today. And, and then, and then um, you know, I like to get to know you guys, so, I'll, you know, I'll critique a mix or two for you, whatever the time uh, we have allows. And uh, nobody has more fun at those than me. It is a tremendous opportunity for you to, when you come off of the visit at the MTSU, go through Gear Expo, which is incredible, then get that big deep dive with Dave. Um, for those of you who can do that, I think David Platteleros is going to join. Be in, yeah. David Platteleros is going to yeah. be in the class. Um, what I have found, and we've said this before, um, is that not only do you become more educated, you create kind of an advisory board for your career. Dave is always available to you. You're going to meet other friends. You're going to get your stuff critiqued. You're going to mic a band and record a band and mix a band, and you're going to. It just is an experience that you can't have. Then you have all the add-ons. If CLA drops through, which is the plan, uh, I'm going to pop through and talk to you about management and your business and how yeah, to make sure that you make a living. Um, I'll give I, them what I, I got. Show you, uh, I can show you how to do it, and Herb can show you how to make money with it. So it's a pretty good combo. Um, and then um, we actually may do some show. We may do the show Tuesday from let's there, put, some parts of it. Let's try to do that. That'd yeah, I think we're going to do that. So you'll also be on Pensado's Place, if that counts. Um, try to go. Well, not we, everybody. We have standards. Yeah, we have a few. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. They, <laughs> we're engineers. Yeah, absolutely. We're, absolutely. We're like one, one, one tower and rifle away from a, from a bad event <laughs> no happening. No question about we're it. Alone. From being in the news we're, for the wrong the thing. That, we're the guy the neighbors always say, wow, he was so quiet when he was over. <laughs> we, we try to 
radicalize you, but in a good way, in a good way, for positiveness. Yeah, we, we found the one profession that works for our personality. The other thing that is important to know, and you've heard us say this a lot, it's not the only place we love, but we love this place. Yeah. The Blackbird Academy as a school is the Yale of audio. It's 25 seats that are just the most desired seats in the place. People go to this and they go get jobs. Their placement service is incredible. So not only do you get to school, you get to work in the studios, which is one of the best studios in the world with the best team in the world. So I, I'm telling you, I'm this experience, uh, the fan. experience is really valuable. So uh, that's October 24th through 28th. Karma at theblackbirdacademy.com is how you can find out. Or you can go to the Blackbird Studio website. Do that quickly. As Dave said, we've reserved three or four seats. Fill them up quickly. People are coming from internationally. They're coming from locally. They're coming from all around the thing because your career will change. We look forward to seeing you. Tennessee Week coming up. Be there. <laughs> Tennessee Week. Right? Dave, what's our ITL? Um, fun with Wawa's. Uh, <laughs> Want to leave it at that? <laughs> I don't know. S see if you get the I, metaphor on this that. Wawa no, no, fun no, no, thing. No. Uh, Act like you're drinking again. Fun with Wawa's. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it. <laughs>、uh, Robert Bradshaw gave me this Wawa pedal. It's got so many great features on it and a great sound.、Um, I'm going to show you how to use it on a kind of a lead vocal, a lead synth line, and.、Um, um, I think it's some cool stuff. You can do it on a vocal. You can do it on a lot of things. As as always, I'm running it through my、uh, radial reamp. So let's let's check it out. This is this is just the sound. I can't do it without moving my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> They're all laughing at me because I can't do it without moving my mouth. You know, we had to call this fun with Wawa's. I I don't know if you can have more fun with your clothes on or not than that.、Uh, so many uses, so many uses. <laughs> See you next time. Our guest has rock in his veins and his heart. It's just so <laughs> pure. We love that.、Yeah. From Marilyn Manson to Eight Millimeter and a、mm. whole bunch of stuff in between. Please welcome to the place the one, the only Sean Bavar. <laughs> hey man. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good. I'm good. really good. Glad you're here, man. Glad you're here. Sean, man, big fan, big fan, big fan. Your 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 pathway, in some ways, seems、um, I've heard it before. But in most ways, it's very unique. And one of the things that I admired about it—and there's a question here somewhere—is the loyalty factor involved. Describe how you started.、Uh, well, I started、um, as an engineer, the way you do, right? You know?、um, and、uh, I was working in a small studio, and I was working on demo tapes for my own band because that's why everybody gets into it to,、right. to do their own stuff. The time, band? This was a, a, a band from a long time ago in Cleveland, Ohio.、Mm -hmm. Was、and、this before was, you played Hungry Eyes? This was. Right around the same time, I played Hungry Eyes、ah, with Eric. Yeah,、okay. um, I had a band, and we were doing demos. And I called Trent Reznor in to play keyboards for me, and because、uh, Trent was the coolest keyboard player in town, you know,、mm. I was trying to get him in my band forever.、Mm. And he came in and played it, and he was like, "Wow, this stuff sounds really good.、Um, would you mix my demos?" Oh wow. oh wow! And I said, "Sure." You know, like you're doing me a solid, I'll do you a solid. He goes, "No, no, my manager will pay you and stuff. Like you have, you know, come you in." <laughs> and, and I went okay, and he said,、well, "I'm doing it at the right track." And I was working at Great Tracks at the time,、mm -hmm. and、uh, I had just started doing some sessions at Right Track, and so I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll go over. I'll be there next week, so let's do some stuff." And so I ended up mixing his demos, and、uh, that's what got him signed and did all that stuff. And、so、he took、actually. me along with him. You know what I mean?、Wow. And, and、uh, so it's like the loyalty worked both ways. Both ways. You know, it's like、uh, you know, I was at that point. He was like, "I'm going to go off and." 
do my record with Flood and Keith LeBlanc and Adrian Sherwood, and right. I was totally stoked right, you know, right, the whole sure. time. And uh, and when when he, when he came back, I was like, I, you know, I want to do anything. You know what I mean? So exactly. if if you need something on the road, if you need me to help yeah, exactly. with engineering, I'm totally in. And he was like, and I really want you to do it. And so he took me on the road with them. And so I mixed front of house live for him. Mm -hmm. And every step of the way, it's like I would go in and I would do the gig. And luckily they saw that I was stepping up with them. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of kept trusting that I would step up, you know. But don't, but don't you find, both of you, that there are moments in the universe that you can't prepare for, but you just have to be ready when it comes. Absolutely. I think that I think that's the whole thing about that. It's right. like when you, it's like the whole thing about being good at what you do mm -hmm. is the given. Mm -hmm. Like you have to do that. You have to put in so the time. True. You have to put so in the true. homework. Mm -hmm. It's like your ten thousand hours. Exactly. You know, you you got to be there. But that's not what makes yeah. you successful. Right. Right. And I mean, yeah. it's it's being willing, being. Uh, being interested, mm -hmm. being being in the right place at the right time with the goods, mm -hmm. you know that's mm -hmm. the big yeah. deal. That's a really Malcolm Gladwell came out with a new book. It's now twenty thousand hours. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm tired. It's really, it's, it's, <laughs> no, the competition is doing ten. You got to do twenty. <laughs> but 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 that is actually a point that is, that is true. So whether you technologically stay stay up to speed or really understand what your signatures are, mm -hmm. or you're you've put in your ten thousand hours, mm -hmm. all that has to do with that moment coming your way yeah. and you being able to grab it. Absolutely, yeah, and that 10,000 yeah. hours is you do your 10,000 hours for this and then you keep going because keep going. the world will pass you by you if you stop. don't, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the whole reason I think all of us as engineers got into the job was because we love the idea that you, there was, it was subjective, like it's not an objective thing. That's two right. plus two isn't four in That's our business. Right. That's right. And so we're constantly, we know that we have to constantly be inspired by new things, seek out new things, mm -hmm. be interested in learning, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's a constant, it's a constant thing. Like, you know, I, I've mixed some records and then five years later, I'm like, oh, if I only would have right. done that trick <laughs> right, now that right, I know, right, you know what I mean? Right. Like, five minutes later. <laughs> right, right. That's true. That's true. You are like that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think to your point, I think yeah. that the trait that is most evident in successful people is curiosity. Awesome. Yeah. You sure. just got to keep being hungry and feeding yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, oh, great. yeah. No, I, I, that's, that's my main thing. I've always thought that in order to be an interesting person, you have to be interested. Yeah. You know, and great I point. want to be interesting. You know what I mean? I he want to very I want quotable. To You're very quotable. Oh, I got, we need quote, to do the Sean more, book. Oh. <laughs> I'm a little yeah, jealous. Yeah. I'm usually the quotable one. Like, he's killing he's, it. He's the Will Rogers of the audio world. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I don't know quite how to frame this question, but essentially what I want from you is some of the information that that has led you to for an appreciation of the music that you do. I, I, you know, some people might call it industrial, some people call it metal. We call it, well, you and I call it music. Uh, <laughs> what is it about uh, what is it that you get out of the experience with with the music that you're doing, and and describe the relationship between the music you do and the audience? Because I think that's the basic foundation upon which a lot of metal's built. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, to me, the, the, the thing about, I have a, a background in psychology as well, and the main thing uh -oh. in the kind of music you didn't we... tell me that, Shannon. <laughs> I tried to. I yeah, Shannon, the, the, Shannon is the manager, <laughs> in case you don't know why Dave's talking <laughs> off in the air. Got you covered. But the, the, the main thing with that is, is, is that in industrial music and metal, I, I think the, the main word that describes it all is catharsis. Mm. Is the I, that when when people listen to that music, the intensity of it, the explosion oh of it, God, they so they want to be in a room with a bunch of people and experience that moment where it's like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Like we we all feel like this, mm -hmm. you know. And it's it's a it's a moment that makes them feel belong like belonging mm -hmm. in a way that they wouldn't have felt before. And it it's very visceral. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, it's a very visceral belonging. It's not a you know, it's like when you're in the mosh pit, you know what I mean, right. and getting excited and bashing into each other. It's like you're, you're not doing it to beat the hell out of each other. Right. You're doing it to connect, right. you know what I mean, in That's a very so physical way. Because you know? I, I listen to a lot of rock in the car, and it's sort of a <laughs> certain do. kind of rock. I do, and I, what I find is I've, I've, I've never articulated as well as you do, but it's a release I get. It's Absolutely. just I get lost in the energy of the power. Yeah. I can put down. It's almost like when I go to a movie. I get to put that down and just be here. A rock record will take me, and I'll just keep replaying passages. Oh, yeah. That allow me to just freak out. I roll down the windows, 
hit the gas pedal and I am out. Oh yeah, I, nothing Chandler, makes you Chandler feel has more. Suffered through that. Yeah, yeah, nothing makes you feel more ready to go than like vulgar display of power. I am or whatever, telling you, know? you man, <laughs> I, it's just abject. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you find yourself driving the speed of the song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the more the is, thing. man, listen, I'll put on an old Boston record, and mm -hmm. we used to go over a hill in college uh -huh. in a Pinto, uh -huh. and oh at God. the height of that, whatever, there were like three songs, we would be a little bit airborne, <laughs> and we would time being airborne, I guess it was the closest thing to an orgasm in a college, <laughs> I could, but we would do it over and over, like we were addicts, we were just, and we were, Oh, yeah. <laughs> when he went to the high time. note to go into oh, the bridge, like, yeah. oh my god, yeah, Air. Exactly. yeah, yeah. But but I think today's point to get back to to the specificity of it, I think that you have to feel that creatively yes. in order to engineer it or mix it or oh, produce yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah, it's yeah. and that's in well, you. and that's the thing. I think that's I mean, as a mixer, I think for sure the main thing is empathy. You have to empathize mm -hmm. with what the artist is trying to do. Mm -hmm. It's like when you sit down and you listen to the song and you're listening to the way things are going, you, you have two approaches to listening. You listen to what's wrong mm -hmm. and you listen to what's right, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, you, mm -hmm. and if you concentrate on what's right, you'll end up making things a lot more interesting and better than if you just listen to what's wrong with it, you know? Bad boy. Bad yeah. boy. They, they, we have like bad boy ratings, <laughs> and when we book somebody, and Dave will, will have talked to them first, he'll look at me before we go on the air and he'll go, bad boy. <laughs> so, so I just want you to know, we had a meeting before the show about how much of a bad boy you were, and you have absolutely qualified that in the first couple of minutes. So. Well, and, thank you very much. Uh, we announced that I, uh, to the world that I, I used a wah wah pedal to do some un unusual things. Uh -huh. But I just realized you did the same thing too, didn't you? Describe, it's funny on the, the on, on the way here. This is this is this is a funny one. On, on the way here, it's just you know turn on the radio mm -hmm. and uh, ex girlfriend by no doubt came on, yeah. uh -huh. and it's like the the, the hook the snare in that is me with a distortion pedal and a wah wah oh, with really? Carl DeFleur doing the engineering, and I'm just playing cool the snare that? drum throughout the song. How as it cool goes. is that? Yeah, wow. it's so funny. That's you crazy. Had the wah in your lap. Yep, had the wah wah in my lap on the uh, sitting on the floor and uh -huh. just. Yeah. But you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, I guess that's a good way to, to, to lead into the fact that uh, you, you don't have any rules or boundaries. Your creativity just can manifest itself with a wah wah pedal or, or any number of things. Yeah, yeah. And is, 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 there, is there a limitation in the, in the type of music you gravitate to most? And if so, if the answer is yes, yeah, yeah. is that why you're going into more film and TV now? If I the think, answer is no, then show's over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm, the answer will be no and. <laughs> um, no, it's like um, there there are limitations, obviously, in when you're doing metal. You know what I mean? Like you, right. there are certain limitations because you have to stick within the genre of what yeah. you're doing because those people want to hear what they want to you hear know, you know what I mean yeah it's like you know I was mixing a Slayer record and yeah, uh, we'll first talk about that I yeah. love that record oh thanks the first records. the first notes I got back from from the band were we're on the wrong side <laughs> you know what I mean it's like <laughs> I had Jeff on the wrong side right. and Carrie on the wrong side you know it's like it was just that like oh, oh Jesus like yeah, I didn't think about that it's like you always like when you're doing metal you automatically reverse the drum so that it's drummer perspective because mm, obvious you know, right you have to they'll kill you you know mm -hmm. but it was like I just hadn't thought oh my god like the, the sides right, you know what I mean right. and you know when you're talking about a band with a legacy like yes. that it's like you have to respect the legacy Absolutely. you know what I mean Absolutely. so so of course you work within the limitations of it and you know but I in that on that record I introduced them to like certain types of distortions on vocals they hadn't used before and, and that was one of the reasons why they wanted me on board was to to increase that level of in your face. You I know love I mean? the description. A, mm. a symphony of distortion. <laughs> oh, that's that, cool. that, that, that caught my ear. Well, yeah, yeah. Cool. well, and that's one of the things that's so fun about it. It's like, you know, when you have great gear, it's like, what does it do when you treat it terribly? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. See mm -hmm. what gets interesting about it. And right. then when you don't have great gear, it's like, find something cool. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I've done entire records where I, I bought a you know, five dollar glass slide. This is what the record's going to be about. Exactly. You know what I mean? Cool and and it's like it's the the things that excite you. You know, whether it's you know a thirty thousand dollar Fairlight back mm -hmm. in the '80s. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or you know a, a guitar with a whammy pedal. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like. Do you use a lot of software plugins. And stuff? A lot of software. Yeah, gotcha. mostly software now. You yeah, know, yeah. just because of the convenience and the right. the ease of it. But you know the. 
the outboard gear I have is very specific and it does a thing that nothing else does. Got and, it. and you know, it's just like, you know, you find in nails we had a Profit VS synthesizer mm. that Trent used for everything. And it was just they had this really cool sound and no one was using them and so it was like one of those instant go to this is, you know, a, a totally new and cool thing. Right. And uh, when we got ready to do the downward, downward spiral, and we'd use this for five years, you know, on everything, you know, and, and but we'd never taken it out live. We'd always sampled it and stuff. And this time Trent was thinking, I'm going to take it out live and, you know, get get the energy of the of the sure. of the thing. And uh, we bought another one and and hooked it up, and it did it didn't sound the same. Oh wow! And then we realized at a certain point we got a we got guys in to try to figure out what was going on or whatever. The 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 one that he bought back in the late late 80s um, it had a like a screwed up op amp on it so it was distorting in this really interesting way and we just thought it was the hot sound of the cool. synth you know I mean? <laughs> oh, it's wow. like we had no idea it was a unique uh, piece I'll of gear done. you know i'll be done talking about unique pieces of gear did jimmy Iovine really send over the mellotron that yes. john lennon owned yes he did oh yeah downwards we like oh, i mean really? literally laid down uh Four by eight plywood boards, front, you know, into the Tate, you know, wow. house, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And so John Lennon's Mellotron was sitting in the middle of that living room where we had How do you touch pigs. It? I mean, that's like that's like <sighs> like lightning comes it's down. So things like oh, yeah, it was example. it was crazy. I mean, we you know it what had a ground problem, so we had a guy to? trying to fix it. Ooh. It it literally you could sit down and play like any of the any of the songs. You know, Strawberry to... Fields, like we oh, sat down wow. and like immediately like it, wow. they had a bunch of loops of like like jazz bands yeah. that, for stuff that Describe they had used. Describe to the used. audience what a Mellotron is so they'll know the... Oh yeah, the, well Mellotron's a, a tape-based keyboard and it... So and every it's, key has a different... Exactly, yeah, and and they're they're all unique, you know. What I mean, so like every every violin pluck, you know, the 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 A A sharp is a little bit different oh than the B God. is a little bit, you know. What I mean, so and everyone has to be looped separately, and yeah. you know, and there were some that like y y you want to go in and like, oh, I got to fix this or whatever, and mo most of that we we'd go in and we'd just sample it into our, you know, because mm -hmm. we had we had the Akai samplers at the time, so mm -hmm. we sampled the whole thing in there. The the only thing we did that was kind of blasphemous was uh, we had a friend of ours come in and fix the ground hum that was in it, you know, just kind of, he changed it, like, fixed a couple of solder points. Sure, and, you know, right. Oh, but left it was, your mark on it. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. But we did sample every freaking note. You How know? amazing would that be? I'd be afraid to touch I can't it. Imagine. It, yeah. was, it was one of those reverential moments, you know what I mean? Because he's just sitting down and, like, seeing Trent sit down and start, Woo! like, he get a sound up, start playing it, and then all of a sudden the Beatles song would come out of wow. it. You know what I mean? It was awesome. Oh my God, yeah. that's amazing. What was, uh, going back to Slayer, what was it like working with Rick Rubin? Um, oh, yeah, he's just, great, yeah. I had a real blast with him. One of the things that, uh, that I really loved about him is he he doesn't bog down in the minutia. Mm. I think, like, he won't, like, henpeck you about like put him more 3k on the snare right, or whatever right. he's like i want the guitars to have majesty you know like it, like it just doesn't fair. have majesty you know it doesn't have it you know yeah, yeah, yeah and it's really like everything he would say to you would really get it and he was always that way where you'd send him a mix and he would text you back because we had a little blackberry texters at the time you know it turned me into text like a texter that's all i, all right. I want to do <laughs> but uh he's like that that guy that when he hears the right thing he just goes cool print it move on right. you know what i mean like, like there's no like, yeah exactly totally yeah. efficient um and you know he he we were doing it outside of the band because they were on tour mm. so it was that totally scary thing of yeah. like you know oh, the band so hasn't heard this. it oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> so i do things like uh, rick would say you know, perfect, print it, move on, and I go, guitar up version, let's do a guitar up yeah, version. Just in case. <laughs> just just in case. In case. Speaking yeah. of guitars, there's a lot of tuned down guitars on that record. Um, yeah. I don't know if I've heard that many tuned down guitars. Um, you've, got a, you've got a magical gift for getting that to work within the framework of everything else in that particular frequency range and distortion and yeah, yeah. Is, is there a philosophical approach that you can share with us for making yeah i mean work? i really stole some of that from uh andy wallace like when oh, he was talking about andy. um doing the jeff buckley record mm -hmm. you know and and his approach to frequencies it's like you know if you're not getting enough of what the g string's doing in that chord mm -hmm. you've got to find that frequency and kind of bring it out and mm -hmm. so 
that was the idea of that. It's like if you know if all these instruments are in these frequencies that are primary usually used for bass, mm -hmm. then your bass has to do a different thing, you know, and the guitar has to open in a different space. So it's yeah. you know it's carving the frequencies within those areas, but always thinking about the guitars not as 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 um, tones but as notes. You know what I mean? Because that mm -hmm. makes those notes I don't, sing. I don't you know? understand. Well, when you could think about frequency as as far as timbre, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So oh, when you're looking at an EQ, okay. you look at it as like a timbre, or mm -hmm. you can look at it as actual notes. You know, like uh, you know, a specific a, frequency. Yeah, like you know, what is it like? 440 is an A. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. and if if you know that the sound you need, like you're not getting the the minor third of this chord, mm -hmm. find that Ooh. frequency. You know what I mean? And Ooh. and bring it up. You know. Ooh. You Ooh. said, and this Ooh. stuck with me for a long time. I, I read this a long time ago about you that getting things to work together is a lot like a symphony orchestra, like the clarinet's not competing with the cello, the, 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 the on and yeah, on and on. Yeah, because of the timbre that, of the instrument. That changed my approach to yeah. mixing when I read that back in the day, uh, because I never thought of it quite like that. You, the, the, the instruments were chosen because they have distinct little ranges mm -hmm. they stay in, yes. so our job is to find a range, a creative range, Make it unique and tasteful and creative, and, and let you sit in that. Yeah, that's, that's, absolutely. That's brilliant. That, I absolutely mean, brilliant. And that's the thing, like with uh, especially when you listen to orchestras, it's like the instruments not only um, because of their their tone, like one's more of a triangle wave, one's more of a sine wave, one's more mm -hmm. of a square wave. It's like they they not only form a function of of kind of keeping out of each other's way, mm -hmm. but they also strike the human spirit in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like mm -hmm. like the sounds of strings, like that that mm -hmm. sound just hits you emotionally in a way mm -hmm. that nothing else can, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if in, in film composition, it's like when you want something to like really start to like tense something out mm -hmm. or express a romantic emotion or whatever, mm -hmm. like a string is the kind of the touchstone mm -hmm. because it's what makes people move, you know? Yeah, I we, that was it, so cool. Well, definitely, I mean, it reminds me of Mark Mangini when we had him on. Yeah who won um, an Oscar for sound design from Mad Max. Oh, yeah. And he says the way he gets his creativity are two ways. One is he does a series of actor uh, lessons, and he knows he's hit creativity when he starts to cry because <laughs> he's been touched. Yes. And what you're talking about is the same thing, that there's certain things when you understand. And I think when you're in an audience, I spend a I lot of time. I mix till I cry. That's like, <laughs> that's how I know I it's right. I mix till others cry. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly the a and director. <laughs> <laughs> and then your manager after that will yeah. lose the job. <laughs> you, get a little, you get a little hard into me, though. Well, <laughs> you know, a little bit. Uh, like but, I, but after you lost that Kleenex endorsement, well, changed. Well, Chongor has seen more tears from me. But, <laughs> but I mean, it's true. But because ultimately, if you're in touch with that, it, it's when I know a moment lands, particularly like yeah. when I put on live events for us, right? Mm -hmm. And and where it, where it ties into what you're saying is the specificity of finding that moment yeah. that you know is going to touch has to touch me first before me understanding that it's going to touch somebody else. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I got to keep carving at it to get to that moment where it's like, da-da-da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, that's a process that is... Somewhat intuitive, but somewhat learned. But once you know it's there, you go farther and farther. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's all part of the the creative experience too. I know if you talk to anyone who does creative work, yeah, you know, it's like it's like people are always kind of amazed at you know stuff we do or whatever. But it's always like you have to that same process that everyone goes through. It's like the first day I get a mix, I sit down with it, I start going through it, and I just like sit there and go like. Oh, I'm a charlatan. Why do I even think I can do this? Right, you know, right, right. and and it's like you work through the suck yep. until you're like, I'm a genius. <laughs> you know? I was about to say, once you do one good thing, your ego takes control and you start liking it. Yeah, but, and then well, and I then it, the but it snowballs too. That's the thing. It's yeah. it snowballs once yeah. you do that one good thing yeah, and snowballs. it starts to click. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. for me, it's usually when I'm cleaning tom toms. It's so like I clean up my, I'm cleaning up my tom toms, and then I start to really understand the rhythm mm. of the track and how it all works together, and how the groove works. You know what I mean? Now, see what's interesting about both of you guys, and I see this more and more. And whatever small contribution we've had to people sitting on left to doing this, I love that we have had that. Is that you guys don't are not just engineers; you're really producers. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're really now taking things that people have. It, no, not, no, not. They, huh? <laughs> no, not, no, not. Well, well, here's what, well, let me speak for Dave as his manager. So he'll want to get a mix 
that is where the person who has done it has left off where they've left off yeah, for yeah. his expertise. So he doesn't necessarily have to start over, but he has a clear direction of where mm -hmm. they want to go. Yeah, 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 that's a big deal. And then I find that with the kind of expertise and, and, and brilliance you both have, that at that point in time, I want you as a manager to do your thing. Like, and artists have to trust you in other things because you're going to hear or see or feel about it in a different way that it, mixing is certainly the word for it, but it goes past that. Oh, yeah. It goes way past yeah. that. Well, as, as a mixer, too, you have to, you, ha you listen with an engineer's ears and you listen with a producer's ears. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and that's one of the things um, I totally ripped off of Tom Lord-Algy was I bought a little JVC boom box, mm -hmm. right? And it's one of my speakers, my four speakers, you know. Mm -hmm. I go to that one, mm -hmm. which is just sitting over on the side, not mm -hmm. in any direction, you know, mm -hmm. boom, and it's like, uh, oh, the chorus doesn't happen. All right. right <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it totally takes me out of, yes. you know, yeah. oh, I need to carve 80 hertz out of this. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like it, it totally puts me into the, yeah. wow, it's not hitting me over the head. That guitar part really needs to fucking slam. Wow. You know what I mean? Right. And so that's, you know. Love this. Um, you said if you don't have what you want, then make it what you then make it what it can be. If you don't have what you want, then make it what it can be. Does that apply to relationships too, or is that just a musical thing? <laughs> um, you know, uh, and, it's and funny. I've been, I've been with my wife. Yeah. We're, we're bigger than audio. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been with my wife for twenty years. And you really yeah. Congrats. And well, I uh, put him on the spot. He's yeah. A He's, this, now. The secret of of that amazing success is I married someone who's exactly like me. You know, mm -hmm. just with way better parts. Uh, <laughs> and you guys are eight millimeter, correct? Yes, we're eight millimeter. Oh, yeah. Cool. And uh, it's like I believe that you should you should seek out. What's great about things? Yes. You know what I mean, um, let's go back. I, to, let's go back to music real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not a, comfortable with this. But it's the same. It's the I'll same thing. That. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, the the idea of seeking out what's great in things. If you're in a business relationship mm -hmm. with someone, like and especially like with music, it's like we're in business relationships with people and in creative relationships. And so, in order to bring out the best in someone else, you have to look for the best in them. Yes, you know what I mean. And then find what that is and try to make that blossom. Hundred percent. Also, right. creating environments that people can be creative in, like, like for example, you, you're known for trying to uh, put live elements into the into the recording process, have people work live in the control room live, yeah, uh, and record projects live. Um, describe that process and how it, it amplifies the performance. Yeah, I, th I think part of that comes from being have been having been a live engineer, mm -hmm. you know, and and the energy you get. Um, was, was those the early Trent days? Yeah, the early yeah. Trent days. Because yeah. I like you know as an en when I was engineering in studio, you know, I was house engineer, you sure. know, doing the normal house engineer kind of stuff. And uh, at night, I go supplement my income by you know mixing mm -hmm. you know live bands, and it was all the. It's like the mid '80s in Cleveland, and yeah. I was, you know, doing every kind of pretty much every original band in town, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, the energy from that was incredible, and just the the excitement of it, and getting to work with each guy, and knowing what the bands wanted to present yeah. to people, and figuring out how to do that in a very short space of time, mm -hmm. um, and finding that when you have that kind of energy in a studio, it's like. Just to sit down and go like, okay, we're gonna do these tracks. And I know we're doing just drums right now, but I'm gonna have, you know, you in this booth and you in this booth and you in this booth, and we're all gonna play it together. Right, you know, what I mean, the right. drummer's gonna be listening to his click, but he's gonna be hearing other things as well, and mm -hmm. it'll just inform it. And it, when you're playing, it doesn't make you feel like the the drummer's so on the spot, just a click and all by himself playing or whatever. Right, you know, right. it's like. He doesn't get any of that excitement or like the feeling of I've done something kind of cool. You right. know what I mean? And right. the whole idea we got into music for was to do stuff that was kind of cool. Period. You know? That's true, you know? Period. Yeah, and have Absolutely. that moment where you're like, yes. Yes, you know exactly what I mean? right. Exactly. And you don't feel that without the human interaction. You know what I mean? It, the 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 goal is yes. Yes. And it feels better when it's a community. Yes. And oh my it, God. It, yeah. It just is true. I mean, yeah. it's it's. I think you know, and and now that because we're in a shared economy. The, um, the, the reality of it is everybody's trying to find that community. You know, we found one and we yeah, get yeah, to yeah. do that. But 
you never get tired of going after that moment where we all collectively kind of go, yeah, oh, it's yeah. us, you know. Yeah, and, and I've been a musician since I was 11 you years play? old. I it's play bass, guitar, drums, you know, keyboard. A lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot gotcha. of stuff. I sang, you know. Oh, I, I actually cool. started as a guitar player. Like, I didn't really like playing guitar. I really wanted to play bass, but my parents were like, you can't play bass by yourself, so learn another instrument. You know? <laughs> wow. And so I was like, oh, piano, and they are like, no. <laughs> we have a guitar. You know. So I started playing guitar, and um, and I liked it. And I was going to do a talent show in like fifth grade, and uh, the guy was was going to sing, and I was playing. We were doing like Cat Stevens songs or sure. something. And uh, the day of, he was like, uh, "You sing, I'm going to play guitar," you know, because he just chickened out. Sure. And so I sang, and the girls were like, "Sean," and, that was and it. I was like, "Yeah, Done. I can do this." Sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> Sean. Um, there's two people that whenever someone asks me about compression, I refer them to. One is you, one is Jack Joseph Puig, and, and yeah. the other one is you. Oh. Uh, let's give a shout out to our buddy Jeff uh, Terzo at oh. Overstayer. Yeah. But also, um, in terms of mastering compression, uh, describe how you use compression for saturation, for groove, patrol, for uh, texture. Oh, yeah. For effect. Uh, um, you're, you're a master of it, oh, and I compliment you on that. Thanks. Um, you know, I mean, there's the, the basic trick, like, and I learned this mainly from side chaining, you know, kind of, you know, the early days of industrial, there was a whole lot of dance influence mm -hmm. into it, you know, and especially with what Trent was trying to do with kind of bringing this, like, hardcore throbbing gristle to mm -hmm. Depeche Mode, kind mm -hmm. of, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the idea was to, you know, figure out side chaining and the groove of that, which is, you know, the, based on that eighth note, mm -hmm. you know, offbeat, right. you know, and and also a lot of the hooks were done on offbeats there too. So you wanted to kind of get that excitement in there. So of course you learn like to use the release and and use it like a delay. Like oh, well I just have to oh, use okay. the same time my delay is going to be. Then it ha that's what the release is, the mm -hmm. release time is, and then you kind of move it around there until you get the the kind of rushing ahead to get energy mm -hmm. or rushing behind to mm -hmm. kind of get groove, you get know? That funk. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and... That, that, it, repeat that, because that's an important <laughs> sentence that it went by real fast. Yeah, I mean, it, the idea of... Move uh, something ahead and behind. Yeah, to, you, you move things ahead and behind to give you, like, energy and mm -hmm. intense and, mm -hmm. and tension, mm -hmm. energy and tension, mm -hmm. and then you also get, um, when you move things behind, like you said, like the funk, it's like, it throws like sexy into it. Like, like a guy like that's this. not, yeah, exactly. Like he's that. not, he's not rushing right. to the clitoris. That's you know, right. he's oh, going oh, back. My man, my man, he understands. She's saying, he you know. He understands where you gotta go. Yeah. Okay, so like, you gotta you know, go other end of the lyric yeah. for me. Exactly, well when you say, when, like when you say bass in a song, yeah. like yeah. bass mm -hmm. is all about the sexy. That's a, yeah, absolutely right. right. You know what I mean? That That's, you You put bass that's in a song for sexy. That's just intercourse, that's two and four. There's no question about it. When did it become clear? Instead of clitoris? It depends on it, it where you're from. from. Yeah, yeah, it depends on where you're from. It's, but see, none of that matters. Is what you do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Well, I, I'm, I'm Shannon, standing you at the foot of the master for sure. <laughs> Shannon said, "The manager, who is a, 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 a just max efficient, wonderful woman who yeah. grew up with all boys, so said totally she agrees." <laughs> cool. Um, Chongor, you got a couple questions over there? Save us, Chongor. Save us. Save you guys. No, this is wonderful. <laughs> First one's from Mike Sinclair. What is your go-to what is your go-to vocal chain for mixing in the box? Uh, my go-to vocal chain is um, I tr I try to hit uh, the overstayer um, FET compressor that I have. Try to hit that. Um, at least, like, I'll take what they've given me and then kind of throw it through that. Mm. Let me cut you off real quick. A very affordable compressor. Oh, my very God. Very affordable and one of the best compressors on the market. Oh, my God. That's it just, why, it does stuff really, that nothing yeah. else yeah. does. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? whisper the price to her. <laughs> $700. Wow. Yeah. Just awesome. So but uh, I try that. to hit that. Um, but my main go-to, like, really is the L1, Waves L1 compressor. Mm. And my reasoning for it, um, it reminds me a whole lot of the old 176. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And how they that had that that kind of dirty upper end distortion mm. that just made things move from you know what I mean? Mm. Like boom, right in the mix. Yeah, yeah focused yeah. it in. And there's some weird um, uh, artifacts that come from when you really kind of push that mm. compressor down. Mm. Um, that I just love 
the way it makes the vocal stand out to you know for me music. like that's that's my so that's my main go to and I use you know the Renaissance like if I don't need something as in your face as that right. you know I'll use the Renaissance but I use combinations like so it's like there's usually at least two or three compressors or limiters in the chain for the vocals have at a certain ever, point. Have you ever tried my, my preset called uh, Rap Squash minus twelve? No, I have not. Try that on, on a vocal. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. Wow. Chung, uh, what else you got? Preset. You oh, did. Cool. Hey, yeah, yeah. What else you got there, man? This second one's from Ali Gold. Where do you go for inspiration if you've hit a creative wall? Um, we, we, you know, uh, if you're like me, you'll leave the room <laughs> and you will sit down and watch a movie. Yep. You know what I mean? Good watch way. a movie, watch a, you know, I, I find inspiration um, reading science magazines, yep. read, like, like yep. yeah, I, I love, yep. you know, Scientific yep. American, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. New Scientist, like, mm -hmm. um, I have a friend who's a, uh, a uh, rocket man, we call him Rocket Man, he's a JPL scientist mm. and stuff, mm -hmm. and every once in a while I'll just go into lectures with him, mm -hmm. doing, mm -hmm. it's like it, you find inspiration outside of, that's the way I normally do, because if I sit down and try to like, if I, if I can, I will try to hit iTunes immediately with songs right. that are in the genre if I'm running into a block like right. that. Like, right. like oh, God, I cannot make this vocal <clears throat> work or I can't make this guitar work in here, you know. And I try to find three or four things that are like it and hopefully get inspired by guys who have done it right before, you know. I, Chuck, I got, can I add a part B? Sure, go for it. This question? Sure, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, part B. Uh, what's your thoughts on referencing? I reference constantly. I don't have like I don't have the Shelly Yakis golden ears. Like like yeah. I don't always know that it's right, you know. Me and too. the more time I spend, and I can spend time on things, I get more. I lose perspective, yeah, I like you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I I constantly <laughs> have at least three or four songs that I'm referencing for the mix that I'm doing, you know, or the or the song I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, that I kind of touch to all the time to make sure I'm kind of in the right ballpark, whether it's how the chorus hits emotionally or whether it's sonically like the low end to high end mm -hmm. ratio because mm -hmm. that's the stuff that I get confused at the, the fastest I think. You know? The only thing I wanted to do was go back just a little bit in that all you guys find that place you go to when you get stuck. Whatever it is, it's well, different things for different, for different folks. It, it not only gets you through being stuck, it'll get you new ideas and it's a place of comfort and safety oh, yeah. when that's happening. I, I know on the business side, frankly, a lot of my business compatriots, we would go to the studio. And not all artists want their business relationships in the studio. I loved being in the studio because then I could say, oh, the other side of my brain gets to just watch these oh, geniuses. Yeah. It's, like walking, it's like walking outside the studio door yeah. when you're playing your mix back. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's and like, you listen yeah, to it yeah, there, yeah. and you immediately know, oh, geez, I right, need to do right. this. Or anything. You Absolutely. also use your car for that, don't you? Is well, the car, the car is a, a bit of a lab because the combination of sort of speed and nature and you have to have an incredible stereo, which I got lucky in my 2007 car. You know, there's a there's a there's a brain function reason for that too. Is it really? Yeah. Um, because I'm you probably do, the subject. It's like it showers and like driving. Yeah. Um, because it's kind of autonomic left brain activity, ah. it lets your right brain open up. So that's so if is you're that if, the same thing as alpha wave state. It's, well, it's a similar it's a it's a similar thing and a different thing, okay. but uh, it's mainly like the hemispheres of your brain control different things. Yes. And left sides for logic and right sides for creativity. creativity. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're doing something that's kind of a by rote, more logical right. thing like showering, you know, right. every time you get a shower, you put the do soap the on, stuff. you do the right same thing, right. the same. Blah, blah, blah. While you're doing that stuff because you're doing it in a very kind of almost like breathing now, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's, but it's your left brain doing it. Mm -hmm. Your right brain goes, go. hey, I got some, I can, I, I can I do some room. stuff here, you know? It's weird and it you happens. said that. That's crazy because yeah. when I have my friends in the car and they're under diminished capacity, usually because <laughs> of some medicinal <laughs> things, these people are sick and they need medicine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The one thing I hear from all of them all the time, it's so crazy is, man, you can drive. Man, you can drive, because I just, I'm just on the automatic pilot, yeah, and yeah. it's just, it's everything feels like I'm cool, and now I can go, you just hit it. Yeah, I yeah, have, that's what my, my wife, whenever she's working on a song, like I'll lay something down for her, and then she just puts it in the car and drives, yeah. and comes up with the ideas. Wow. Yeah. If, um, if you're left-handed, do the sides of your brain reverse? 
You know, that I'm not too sure about, actually. Could be. That could, could be. be. Hit something. How, how is your arm for batter's can box? Can I get one more question? You can, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, oh, this, he's got to come back. When you do a horror film and you do sound design, there can't be more fun on earth oh. than doing sound design for a horror film, <laughs> can the there? Greatest. Is like, it really? Oh my god! Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, a, I'm a horror fan. Like, like I, not necessarily cut them up movies, but like supernatural horror sure. stuff. You know, sure. Exorcist kind sure. of stuff. You know, absolutely. It is. It's so fun to make those scares happen. Like, wow. I, oh my god! It's it's a blast. And plus, you because you design stuff with you know the stuff we do in music, where you can make stuff up that mm -hmm. hasn't been there before, mm -hmm. and you can pile in a bunch of stuff that you've heard from other movies, mm -hmm. put them together to make them happen. Like, oh my new. god! It's so fun. How cool is that? Yeah. You're it's doing that so stuff fun. to picture. Yeah. And, and, oh, yeah, I love it. And the composition, for... like like doing the composition. I have a. I have my daughter's violin, violin. She uh, the, from we were when she was really little. She was doing Suzuki method. Mm -hmm. So like I'd play with her, you know. And so we both had our violins and stuff. I still have her three quarter violin, and I play it constantly oh, on the thing. So cool. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, like if you took a picture of this guy playing this teeny tiny violin oh, you know, great. for this scary moment, it's, it's oh, hysterical. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. All right, sir, you got a, it's, up, it's oh, on you. How's, yeah, how's oh. your arm? It's time to throw some pitches. <laughs> you got batter's box ready to go? I might, I might not do this anymore. Because it's going to be just a home run. It's just going to be over the wall. Look, he's coming out of Cleveland. He won the basketball championship. <laughs> LeBron came home. He's feeling good about himself. He's also smart. <laughs> Starting to feel like the Lakers last year. Well, I mean, just <laughs> you know, that's that's bad. That's, and I'm a Laker. I'm, I'm a Laker fan. We know what you know. They won I am. 17. They won in. They're going to be okay better okay, this year. Okay, I'm ready. Ready. All right, ready? Yeah. All right, tee it up. Batter's box time. Mike Cree. Um, distortion. Mm. Samples. Um, collage. Program drums. Perfect. <laughs> distortion. Symphony. Reverb. Um, it's not my best subject. Ah. I love it, though. Synthesizers. Um, a means to an end. Vocals. The, the only thing that matters. Ooh. Stereo bus. Compression. <laughs> Guitar pedals. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was commitment. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I love pedals. Okay, you can't say reverb. You can't say laptop or your wife or pets or anything. But if, if your studio, if your studio caught fire, what piece of gear would you rescue? I would take my fretless. I have a, a Fender PJ fretless from like 1979, and Whoa. that's the first thing I grab. Yeah. Well, that's a commitment. Are you a big fan of? Uh, uh, oh, I forgot his name. Tell you what, he's a big fan of Pino. Uh, Pino Palladino. Yes. Oh. He, the reason Pino I have a fretless sick. bass is because I went to see Gary Newman with Pino playing yeah. on the I Assassin tour. I, I went home and I was like, oh my god, I got it. And I called my guy, mm -hmm. my my music store yeah. guy, and he said, uh, I just, I just got one in and I put a badass bridge on it oh, and wow. said, it's I'm here there. for you. Ooh. And I went. Okay, I came in, he handed it to me, I touched the neck, I handed it back to him, and I went, I'm going to the bank. <laughs> right now. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And Pino just worked on Keith Urban's record. I know. Oh, crazy. He's, 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 the, he's a genius. I used to hang he, out he with him. He taught himself by, um, like, listening to horn riffs. Did yeah. he really? Like, that was his big thing, was doing wow. horn stuff. Yeah. Paul Young, every time you go oh. away, that's probably the greatest bass Go listen to some D'Angelo records. Oh. Oh, my God. Dude, I mean, the, the groove. Oh, oh. God, just, just painful. It's so stank. Like, just that behind the... Oh, it just stank. Mm. Stank is the right Dang. word. S-T-A-N-K. Oh, yeah. Plus, just the way the note, the way he slides oh. into the nose. Oh, sick. He's it's so sick. sweet. Like, like he just yeah. has great I ruined my guitar. I, I didn't have an extra neck, but I pulled all the frets out of it and filled them in with wood putty, and then, yeah, I was a Oh, idiot. awesome. Yeah, I had to go buy a new guitar. <laughs> uh, actually, a friend of mine in college had one. He was a Greek guy, and he, he did that to his... Uh, one but of those Gibson it. specials, oh. mm. you know, and mm. it had the maple neck, which actually works great. Like the mm. maple neck did that really cool. I, I got a question for you because, and I hope the answer is yes, because if not, we it's just such a shame. <laughs> uh, so not that I didn't set you We're up for an answer. Right. Do, <laughs> do you ever participate in panels or educating things oh, yeah. so and so forth? Because yeah. you would be... Absolutely phenomenal. No, that, that's actually when I went to college. I went to Ohio University for audio production, and I, I take a class I'm and then teach. I'm speaking to their it. class on Thursday. Oh, that's amazing! They're, it's they're, a great they have, school. They have a semester in LA every year oh, that wow. a friend of mine oversees. They come here. 
Oh, wow. Premier, and I'm going, I'm literally speaking to a class on Thursday at Oakwood. Well, let me know when it is. I like to, if I oh, could step in, I'd, oh. love to, I'd love to sit in and just watch. Well, you know. let me tell you what we would like to do is we go around the country and we have these panels and we speak to lots of people in lots of schools and I'd love to talk to you and Shannon about joining us on some of those. Oh, be awesome. Our yeah, audience would I, the, love I thought the you. teaching is the greatest thing about to learn. It's you amazing. I mean? Like you... It's like when you're teaching someone about like how you use compression, you start saying stuff and then you go like, oh my God, that's, that's, what, that's why that works. Right. Oh my God, you know what I mean? Like you, right. you have revelations. It's know? the biggest gift of the show that I, it, usually I'm kind of charged with seeing down the road and I tell people, you know, the issue with vision is you can see down the road, but you can also see the train when it's coming to run over you. Oh. <laughs> so it goes both ways. <laughs> uh, what I didn't anticipate is that teaching um, the fact that we would be given the opportunity to teach and people accept it as teaching and then what it does for you. Oh, yeah. When you watch, you know, my whole raison d'etre now is to just help kids. And kids aren't always 22. Sometimes they're 40. Sometimes yeah, they're yeah. 50. Go to the next Hopefully level. Hopefully we're all, I mean, we're, we're all, all kids. still there. I don't, wanna, yeah. I don't even want to give that up. Yeah. No. Um, I hate curiosity. to bring this one to the close. I'd like but to be a little more mature. You, <laughs> you got to roll with us. Yeah. Oh, I'd love, I'd love to. That. I, I would love what, to. What a great hour. Dave, why don't you take us home? Okay. Shout out to Shannon O'Shea. Yes, Shannon. Yes. Great job. Herb, don't put that near your mouth. Oh. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm used to it. I work for nine sales. I'm going I'm 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 to get serious a little bit, and I Ooh. want you to help me out. Okay. Uh, this Thursday, you were given an award. We oh, talked about it. I was. And uh, Changa, feel free to chime in. Mm -hmm. um, her, Changa and I were sitting together at the table, and mm -hmm. we were so proud to know you. We were so proud that, that your peers gave you recognition. We were so drinking. proud that you were the... <laughs> The baddest man in the room, you ah. were the funniest man in the room, mm. and um, I didn't realize it, I was going to be that. But. I didn't either. But what were you? <laughs> and, and, and you had the crowd, and um, uh, I know our audience. If they knew that, they would, uh, in one unified voice, go, "Way to go, her! Way to go, her!" Because you guys love him as much as we do, and and, and you're in a, in a way responsible for this award that Herb is getting. Oh, big time! I mean, his talents are obviously the main no, reason. You guys but, are responsible uh, for it. But I just wanted to <clears throat> shine a spotlight on that because you worked so hard. Mm. Uh, you sacrificed your health. You sacrificed a lot of things to, to, to bring this show to to you guys. And um, send him a boy, Herb. You know, send him a uh, going to do a boy. Facebook page. No, just <laughs> at a boy. Send him a send him a Facebook uh, whatever whatever your, your method of uh, communication is. His phone number is eight one eight. And um, just let him know how you Chongor. I'm being serious. Let him know how you feel, cause cause I love this man, and uh, it was great to see the love that his peers gave him, and the respect too. Well, so it was a wonderful let, night. Let me let me just say this. You can't top that. I I can't top it, but I, I got to give you. I think, for whatever this is worth, and, and just you know, indulge me for thirty seconds. <clears throat> I've had a long and varied career. Uh, the beginning of it was with Dave. And the end of it was with Dave. And I think from being a manager, it was pretty successful. And then, you know, label person, it was pretty successful. And Maurice Very White Times, pretty successful. And then Pensado's Place, an amazing experience. To be named, <clears throat> it was called The Living Legend. And I got the Creative Visionary Award. And you join people like Quincy Jones and Russell Simmons and right. Troy Carter and right. L.A. Reid and lots of really muckety mucks. Um, but it's mostly because of Pensado's Place. The creative visionary part, where I never got a chance to exercise my creative powers except on behalf of other people that made them stars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's been very weird to turn it on ourselves. And yeah. because of our partnership and your trust, because I know how much you've sacrificed for this, you always make it me, but it's also you, and I'm rectifying that now. Um, and because of you guys. Yeah. So when we talk about the power of the community, and gathering together and getting to meet badasses like this. And I yeah, get to sit in between badasses like that. And whatever badassery I've gotten, it's mostly because of you guys. And so, one, I thank you. You know, I love you to death. Chong and the whole team. And we're not done. The only thing I want to tell you is that I could not be more inspired to go do greater shit. I got a lot of shit in my head that we're going to go do. And once we get past a couple little things, 
We're going to keep bringing you the noise in ways that you haven't heard it. You're going to see this cat a yeah. lot, okay, because this was a fantastic <laughs> hour. Good night, boy. Love you, boy. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Good night, everybody. See you. <laughs>